In this section, we'll be creating the well-known Panton chair by Vitra Design. To start, open a new blank document, not from a template, and under File, Document Settings, Units, set the units to centimeters. Double-click on the Edit Subdivision tool and choose a sphere primitive. Enter a value of 50 centimeters and click OK. Place the sphere in the center of the blank document and zoom so that you can see the entire subdivision on screen. Change to an isometric view, and then with the Extrude Face mode enabled, extrude the top of the sphere upwards 10 centimeters. Extrude the top again, this time 50 centimeters. The small section between the two larger ones will make up our first bend. We want a double-edged split in the cage here, so that we can control how the geometry contours in the bend more easily. If we just had one split here, the bend would be far too sharp. Extrude the top face yet again another 10 centimeters. Extrude the top face another 50 centimeters. This will make up the upper back of the chair. Enter our front view, then in transform mode, marquee select the cage vertices on the left side of our object and move them to the right 44 centimeters, squishing our subdivision to start to form the flat plane of the chair. Marquee select the top eight groups of vertices. Notice where the 3D dragger locates itself. If we add more groups of vertices to this selection now, the 3D dragger will relocate to that new selection. While holding shift down, marquee select first the left group of vertices underneath, then the right group of vertices directly below our current selection. This gives us the desired point of rotation we want. Bend the selection to the left 45 degrees as shown. Now, deselect all the vertices. Then, marquee select the leftmost seven clusters of vertices. Then, while holding shift, select the next cluster of vertices to the right as we did before, giving us the point of rotation we want. Bend this selection again to the left another 45 degrees. Select the leftmost four clusters again. Then, add the lower cluster just to the right to the selection then the cluster above it. Again, using Shift Marquee Select to keep adding to our selection and ending on the cluster we want to use as the bend or kink point. Bend this selection to the right 45 degrees, which should be negative 45 degrees in this view. Now, select the leftmost three clusters of vertices, then adding the fourth cluster from the left to the selection as well, and bend this another negative 45 degrees to the right to create the backrest of this chair angled against the seat. Change to a right isometric view, and if you haven't already, go ahead and render an OpenGL. Give the subdivision object a solid fill color, if you find the portions of the default color difficult to see. I'll go with red here. Enable Edge Split Mode, and click on the bottom center of the cage, right in the middle, to give us our center cage geometry. If you hadn't noticed before, you can control this edge splitting exactly. Press Tab after the first edge split click, then enter a percentage of 50 to split this edge exactly in its center. Click again to split it. This isn't always important when you're just eyeballing it, but for precision work where you want to find perfect symmetry as we do here, I recommend it highly. Switch back to a front view and enable transform mode. Marquee select all of the vertices along the bottom edge and move them to the left, negative 30 centimeters, to begin the swept under leg shape. Now, select the six clusters of vertices that make up the backrest of the chair and move them to the right, 11 centimeters. Then, using the flyover tool to move to a left isometric view, select the bottom center two vertices and then the front view, move them to the left, negative 22 centimeters. The form is starting to appear now, but we still have this bladed edge along the bottom. We want the base to be perfectly flat so that it sits firmly on the ground. Enable the crease mode, then use the flyover tool to reveal the bottom of the shape. Select the bottom two faces with crease mode, then uncrease the edge between these two faces to give us the nice flat face we want that curves around under the seat. Back to a front view. Take a look at the bend between the seat and the leg. It's a bit extreme and sharp, 
making it appear flimsy. We want to thicken this a bit. Marquis select the two clusters of vertices on the underside of this bend. Then move them left negative two centimeters and up three centimeters. This can be done either in two actions with the green and red linear control handles or in one by using the blue planar control handle and entering both values one after the other in the floating data bar for X and Y. Looking lower down, select the two clusters at the front of the chair's base and move them to the right 8 centimeters to make our base a bit more solid. Now enter an isometric view and enable edge split mode. We want to add cage geometry to create a bucket in the seat. So click along the side of the chair seat edge and enter 55%, then click again. Enable transform mode, then select the newly created top and bottom vertices in the center of the seat. Then in a front view, move them down negative four centimeters and to the left negative six centimeters. Then with the flyover tool, look up under the bottom of the seat and select the center four vertices that make up the bend between the seat and the backrest. Switch back to the front view. Then move these to the left negative four centimeters and down negative four centimeters. Now focus attention on the very top of the backrest. We want to lean this back a little to make the chair more comfortable. So in a front view, select the very top vertices and move them to the left negative four centimeters. Now to add a bit of curve to the back. In an isometric view, select just the top center two vertices and move them backward negative three centimeters. Then to thicken the backrest slightly, select the top rear vertex and move it back an additional negative five centimeters. Switch to a right view. Then select all the vertices along the top. Enable the scale secondary mode in the view bar for the edit subdivision tool. Then scale the selection by 0.8. Then select the center cluster of vertices, switch back to the transfer and rotate mode. Then move this cage geometry upward seven centimeters to give us a nice peak. We want to square off the overall shape. So enable edge split mode then along the very top edge near the left side, click once and add a split at 20%. Then add a similar edge split along the top on the right side, again at 20%. Now in a front view, select the very bottom left vertex on its own with transform mode. Then move it to the left negative 30 centimeters to give the base that large flat area and stronger angle you see in the real chair. That'll wrap up this portion of the guide. In the final chapter, we discuss converting existing subdivision geometry into other 3D objects to make it easier for you to integrate subdivisions into existing projects.